fans. Controllers, keyboards, mice, joysticks, buttons. Hands. We play games with our hands. We walk, run, jump, fight, talk, eat, sleep, pray, emote. All with our hands. VR has made strides to allow us more control, but we still do so much with our hands. It feels like every new game gets more complex, gets more controls, more buttons to remember, more combinations to remember. And so a question to think about is, what if you didn't have to remember everything? What if you could just think about what you wanted to do and it happened? Like, would that change how you play games? Brain scanning is one of those topics that is so sci-fi, most people don't believe it to be real. Things like EEG scans have existed for nearly a hundred years and are used in hospitals today, but still the concept of mapping, understanding and reading the human mind sounds impossible. Okay, you really want to go down the rabbit hole? For a few minutes, okay. why not? I mean, this is... The last time you were here, we really couldn't discuss it. And then there was, a, I guess, a press release or something that sort of oh, outlined. Yeah, sure. If someone ultimately does get a Neuralink installed, what will take place? Well, for version one of the device, it would be um, uh, take out a chunk of skull, replace, put the Neuralink device in there. Um, you'd, you'd put the the electrode, you'd insert the electrode threads very carefully into the the brain, um, and uh, and then you, you know stitch it up and um, and you wouldn't even know that somebody has it. <laughs> Whoa. So how do we monitor a brain? How do we read thoughts? Well, it all starts with neurons. So this is a cool looking picture of a neuron. You guys re might remember neurons from your eighth grade biology textbook. Neurons are nerve cells. They are the atomic units of the brain. Uh, if you put enough of them together and you organize them in various functional and hierarchical ways, you get a brain. Right? And so they, they communicate by firing or not firing. They send le electrical signals down various pathways of processing, and they're clustered together in various brain regions and seem to you know, provide distinct substance of functionality, although not, not always. Uh, there are about 100 billion in the brain, and connections between neurons is called a synapse. Uh, there are about 1,000 trillion or one quadrillion synaptic connections in a human brain. Uh, and when neurons fire, and this is the important part, they produce every single aspect of conscious and unconscious experience. Every thought you have, every sensation you have, everything you perceive, every feeling you have. They're a consequence of neurons, or bundles of neurons, or patterns of neurons firing together, or not firing. So in some respects, we're actually already inside the matrix. Like what we see and experience and feel, right, is constructed by neurons firing up here, right? And when you have, you know, when you have a thought, neurons fire in a particular way. When you have a different thought, neurons fire in a different way. Um, there is a neurological correlate or origin for every single thing that happens in our brain. And our reality is constructed by these patterns of firings. And so if we can reliably measure them, then maybe we could start doing things, useful things with them. Have I told y'all the story of the great bit battle of 2089? Yes, Grandpa. You've told us that story many times. Well, great. It was a cold day in December. No ammo left, right on the border between the ones and the zeros. The zeros were pushing forward. Hope was distant, but something deep inside kept us still fighting for freedom. Just when the zeros were about to reach our encampment, a light shone from the sky, and out of the blue dropped a crate full of something. This is where you asked me what was in the crate. We already know what was in the crate, Grandpa. Inside was the most incredible assortment of unique items from great franchises like Pixar, Rick and Morty, Marvel, and more. The squadron commander had signed up for the monthly subscription for Loot Crate, which includes a new box theme each month, full of items that can't be found anywhere else. I took that loot. I brought it back to camp, 
just as the Zeros were closing in. Turns out, the Zeros are fans of Rick and Morty. Well, we ended up bonding with them over memories of Pickle Rick and the Lack. I guess Zeros and Ones have more in common than we think. Anyways, if y'all want to get 15% off your first loot crate, you can use code for 15% off. Now ain't that a deal. Have I told y'all the story of the Great Bit Battle of 2089? No, Grandpa. No, you haven't told us that story. He's right. What happened during the battle? It was a cold day in December. So... That's pretty much the whole idea. Measure every single firing or non-firing neuron in our brains to build the pathways and patterns that relate to our thoughts and our feelings. Essentially allowing us to read our minds. That sounds easy enough. The real challenge comes in translating this mass of data into something we can actually use in a computer. Startup Norable launched the first ever mind-controlled video game back in 2017, which used deep learning algorithms to find patterns in the brain for simple actions like imagining an object coming towards you. The cap has sensors on there that record brain activity. They're called electroencephalography sensors. That records your electrical signals coming from your brain. And our software allows us to take that brain activity and interpret what you actually want to do. And then from there, we actually create the actions that you want. We need to find a way through this door. Look around for clues. Keeping this brief, a deep learning algorithm is an AI computer that learns from doing. This deep learning signal processing system does exactly what we've been talking about. It finds patterns in the brain. We need to say, okay, this pattern of electrical impulses means happiness, or it means sadness or it means I wish I had reloaded a fraction of a second earlier. The limit of these systems is that they need data. Lots of data. The more scans the AI has, the more accurate patterns it can find. So feasibly, once brain scanning becomes a common home unit, the data will skyrocket, and these deep learning algorithms will be flooded with new brain patterns to find. Our current examples from companies like Norable will look like nothing in comparison. I mean, could we find pathways for our thoughts? Like the ongoing dialogue in your head? Really not. Uh, hold that thought. Most devices used by companies like Norable sit on the outside of your head, and these are called non-invasive methods. What Elon is talking about, the device implanted in your skull, is known as an invasive method. Those arise many more of the ethical concerns with what are known as brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs. The most common non-invasive BCI is the EEG, or electroencephalogram. This device reads electrical activity. Aim it at the brain, and it can detect the electrical activity of neurons firing. With a precise enough instrument, we're able to read every single electrical impulse passing between our neurons, giving us a way to read the brain. Now, writing to the brain? The, uh, the hole would be small. How big would the hole be? That's a whole different story, and we're going to have to save that one for another video. There are many different home EEGs, both coming in the future and out now, but one that really interests me is the Next Mind, an EEG that sits on the visual cortex and can read the images projected. This is the Next Mind device. It's a non invasive brain sensing wearable for real time interactions. Everything you see with your eyes or inside your mind, when you close your eyes and imagine something, is mirrored in the visual cortex. My name is Jack Gallant. I'm a professor of psychology and neuroscience here at UC Berkeley. So uh, on the left here, we have a movie that we showed a subject in the magnet. And on the right, we have a brain. And you can see the brain activity is painted here on the side of the brain, but the brain's kind of crunched up in the skull, so it's hard to visualize. So we kind of inflate it, and then we flatten it out, and we can see a flat map of the visual cortex and the rest of the brain as the person watches the movie. The problem here for us is to translate between these movies that occur and this pattern of brain activity that occurs. So on the left here is the movie we actually showed people, and on the right is our reconstruction. 
when the movie that we showed has a fairly common object like a person, our reconstructions are actually fairly accurate. But when the movie that we showed is something rarer, as you'll see in a second, like this abstract thing, then our reconstructions are coarser. In our paper, we just modeled this very back part of the brain, the early visual system, primary visual cortex. And that part of the brain responds to the little local features in the movie, little edges and colors and pieces of motion and texture. But this part of the brain doesn't know anything about what the objects are in the movie. In parallel, we combine our new device with advanced machine learning algorithms that translate the data in real time, that interprets the data in real time. Currently, a next mind is only able to reliably make out very basic shapes, and this is likely because the images found by a next mind are only slightly more detailed than the ones found by the psychologist at UC Berkeley. Still, the use of deep learning algorithms sets the capability of a device like this only in line with how much you use it. So much like with Norable's device, once it gets released, the amount of data will flood in and the capabilities will grow very suddenly. As the images found get more and more detailed, eventually it will become just sort of a camera from your eyes. I mean, what would that look like? Like, would it be normal, like a camera? Or would it be distorted, skewed, mishmashed? It wouldn't make sense to other people, only making sense to you filled with your own imagination, your own biases. I mean, what if you wore it when you went to sleep? What would it see? I mean, what I mean, what would happen when you hold that thought? This goes behind your ears, uh -huh. and so you want your your hair to be out of the way. Okay. So it, this is this is my brain right now. This is your brain right now. Oh my gosh. In real time. This is wild. It's it's pretty wild. So we can look at facial expressions. So mm -hmm. we can tell if you're blinking, you're winking, looking left and right, furrowing your eyebrows, raising them in surprise, smiling, mm -hmm. um, clenching your teeth because you might be nervous. So all of those things we can detect very very easily. Emotive released a pretty impressive EEG all the way back in 2013 that could already detect basic facial gestures just from the readings from your brain. I mean, theoretically, once we have more detailed readings, couldn't we translate your entire face onto a virtual one? Like, imagine seeing someone in VR chat, but their eyes, mouth, nose, everything is perfectly synced to their actual face. You get some CGI level face tracking, but in a video game. I mean, surely if we can detect activity relating to the face, couldn't we do the same for like other body parts? Like, what if you got you're both your legs tracked in VR, you know? I mean, couldn't you do the entire, like the whole body? Like, like, like Matrix style, like you're just there. Hold that thought. Okay, okay. You can likely see where I'm going with all of this. All these ideas are small now, but spark a boatload of imagination for what could be. All these ideas are a lot of fun, both to talk about and to think about, but it's not stuff that's really gonna happen in our lifetime, you know? It, it, it mind control, a camera made from your eyes, full body tracking with no tracking. It's crazy. It's, it's fun to talk about, fun to think about for me and you right now in this YouTube video, but it's not something that's gonna happen, especially not in our lifetime, you know? Moore's law is fast, but it's not that fast. Right? So what if you could type directly from your brain? It sounds impossible, but it's closer than you may realize. You have many thoughts. You choose to share some of them. Today, we've assembled a team of more than 60 scientists, engineers, and system integrators. They specialize in machine learning methods for decoding speech and language, in optical neuroimaging systems that push the limits of spatial resolution, in the most advanced neural prosthetics in the world. And we're just getting started. I am Thomas Rudin. I'm the CEO of Control Labs. I lead a merry band of neuroscientists here what we've done is virtualized the hand, the full continuous motions of the hand, the dynamics of the hand. 
I can wave it back and forth, obviously. I have each individual finger is active. If I can decode all the actions of the hand, again, I can decode what the hand would otherwise be doing when it's moving the metal. An armband outfitted with a number of sensors. Dr. Rajesh Rao is a neuroengineer and director of the Center for Sensory Motor Neural Engineering at the University of Washington. He is developing safe, non-evasive devices that can connect to the brain to accomplish things like controlling a prosthetic arm or sending commands to a computer. You can imagine moving their hand and we use the computer to extract the patterns that correspond to imagined uh, movement of the hand. You know, and like I was saying earlier, the brain-computer interface stuff is you know, we're way closer to the matrix than people realize. Personally, the area I'm spending a lot of time on has, uh, has been growing out of a bunch of research that occurred a while ago in brain-computer interfaces. You know, and like I was saying earlier, the brain-computer interface stuff is, you know, we're way closer to the matrix than people realize, right? It's not gonna be the matrix. The matrix is, you know, a, a movie and it misses all the interesting technical subtleties and just how weird that the post-brain-computer interface world is gonna be. So maybe we're not the matrix just yet. But we are close, like really close, like way closer than we thought. And that's kind of scary, to be honest. Elon tries to quell our fears by saying, well, see it coming if AI ever happens to take over. That it's not going to be like suddenly uh, Neuralink will have this incredible neural lace and start taking over people's brains. Okay. I mean, <laughs> nobody brought up controlling the brain, Elon. Why, why would you? Yeah, this is going to sound pretty weird, but... Um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. So, uh, but th this, is, this is not a mandatory thing. Um, mandatory? But I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Uh, listen, I'm way out of my depth here. This whole thing is terrifying. Or it's not. It's either the best thing to ever happen to VR, or it's Facebook's one-way pass into your brain. It's either our only hope to merge with AI, or it's AI's only hope to push us out. It's either a magic device that lets you see dreams, or it's the government's way to monitor you through your own eyes. It's either the cure to so many existing problems, or it's the creation of so many new problems. It's either Sword Art Online, or it's The Matrix. Well, I, I guess Sword Art Online didn't end that well either, but... You know, now that I think about it, no sci-fi with brain-computer interfaces in it ever works out well. Hmm, I just hope that's a coincidence. Uh, there was tons more research done for this video than is in this video, uh, and there's a load, there's a load more stuff about this, this topic that I haven't gone into, including a lot of stuff about invasive BCIs. I'm gonna leave links in the description to everything shown in this video, as well as a couple more things if you want to travel your own way down this rabbit hole a little bit more. Uh, I think that is it. Okay, disrupt people. I'm done. Thank you for having me back on your channel again. Hopefully I didn't give you too much of a headache with BCI stuff. Uh, if you want more stuff from specifically me, I have a personal channel called Virtual. Uh, and other than that, that's everything. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>